Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and uh, on my last video I had a question, what is the name of that USB DAC that I have, and uh, here it is, it's a Geek Out, Geek Out HD 720, it's, it's an older model already, and, um, and it's a USB DAC, so you can plug it in your notebook, computer, and it has two outputs. And, uh, and as I mentioned in the video, I'm kind of happy with it, to use it with a notebook or computer, uh, but it has one flaw, and that flaw is that it overheats, it, it runs super duper hot, so even if you touch it, it's, it's searing hot. And, and that's something that, uh, that you just need to be careful, so if you have uh, uh, something, let's say a DAC, a USB DAC especially, because they need to make them compact and put a little amp inside to drive your uh, headphones. So basically the, the heat that that amp generates has to dissipate within this tiny, tiny chassis. So you don't have that big external DAC chassis that can nicely dissipate that heat from the op amp that's inside, but only a tiny one. So that's why it runs super hot. And, and that's, that's a consideration you need to think about, that when you have a device like this, that runs super hot, it means that you are getting a lifespan only of a few years, not longer. And, uh, and that's what I, I... actually in the beginning I was using it heavily, I had it in my computer at work at all times, and then, as it is, the heat was doing its job, uh, damaging capacitors inside, damaging, uh, wearing out the transistors, and it started getting glitchy. So, it, and then when it happens, it overheats even more, and then the only reason, only way to save it is to just unplug from the computer, let it cool down, and, uh, and often if I just put it back once it's cold, it still wouldn't work, I had to leave it like a week or two to recover, and then it works again, and uh, and only recently I added this heatsink to it, which which does a great job. So it 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 sinks away a lot of heat from the chassis. Uh, have I done this several years ago when it was new? Then I would have less problems with it. But uh, even though I though I know about this, it just never occurred to me to do that, and it's. I can just blame myself for that stupidity. However, now I can share with you that all of you who have decks like this, like a USB deck, and, and check with your fingers if it's running super hot, then just get a piece of copper tape and just find areas uh, where, where you may be like, I did not cover this because I didn't want to cover the information, just cover up the unused side of the deck and then I let it as, as a longer piece and I folded the end back on itself because this is sticky copper tape and, uh, and it sticks to the cabinet, sticks to the side and, uh, and then just fold it back. So this will transfer the heat away from this little box so that the insides are not cooking as much. So. Now it just helps to extend the life a little bit, but by now the insides are already kind of cooked, so it's kind of a, a last resort of giving me a few, maybe a, a couple more months, a couple more years of very little use to extend its life, but if you do this at the very beginning, then with those hot devices, just this does like extra uh, 20 degrees Celsius heat sinking and and if you run it 20 degrees lower then it's already it's extending its life by by three times or five times so so that this is probably <laughs> that little piece of copper tape is is the biggest investment or biggest uh, benefit that you can do for your usb deck or if you have a, a, a deck or or maybe a little solid state amplifier in a small chassis then, and it runs super hot, do this thing, make heat sinks, make uh, this uh, mock-up heat sinks on, on them. Just be careful that it, it, if it has like venting holes inside, then uh, cut 
the space for those holes and let, let the air come out through there. If you cover the holes, you are not helping at all. You are doing the exact opposite. You need to cut out the holes if they are holes, but if when there is no holes, you can cover the whole thing with uh, with copper tip and you can make fins. And for an amplifier, you can make like, let's say this is the top of the amp and you can make like one fin, two fin, three fins. So like multiple fins like sticking up like you see in in uh, commercial heat sinks, but you don't need a commercial heat sink to cool your amp. If you use a copper tip, that will be perfect as well. It might work even better than a commercial heat sink because for a commercial heat sink, you would actually need to add some uh, thermal conductive material between your amplifier and the heat sink, and they need to uh, mate perfectly. So if there are holes between your, your heat sink and, and the amplifier surface, then those holes will not conduct the heat and there will be pockets of hot air building up there and your device will overheat. So that's why the tape is extremely efficient because even if you have an amplifier that, that the chassis is like a little bit like rounding or it has some you know frills in it and nowadays nothing is just a plain box. <laughs> they, they make them like have like curves and everything and for that there's you cannot buy a heat sink that's curved perfectly like that but the copper tape curves to the shape. So that's a little trick to extend the life of the unit and uh, and that's it. So that's why you asked about uh, what, what is that little deck I'm using upstairs. And um, that that's my response. This is an older deck. I think this company still exists and they make newer versions. Hopefully they, they make them run a little cooler. I don't know if they do. Uh, if, if some of you have experience with that, just type it in, in the feedback, in, in the comments. I would really appreciate that and, and, and my other viewers would also appreciate that, I believe. So, I think that's it. That's it about this little deck. And thank you for asking that question. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.